Hey. Hey, Hey guys. Welcome to March. It is March. Um, Happy Women's (laughs) Month. Happy Motivational Monday, Mindful Monday, or Happy Monday Rundown. It's the Monday Rundown. We're happy to have you with us here. Um, If this is your first time with us with the Monday Rundowns, this is where Winston and I get to talk about all the things we don't get to talk about when uh, we are normally doing our Wednesday shows. Um, I love the different topics that we bring on. I love how we tune in to other thought leaders, other content creators to also get some ideas and hear from them too, because we all get to learn together. It's really cool. Very, very cool. So uh, if you guys have been following, you know, we typically have a topic. We like to discuss, uh, to your point, you know, things that we don't get into on Wednesday. So let's see what we got on deck for today. I miss our drum rolls. Hmm. Can we balance modern life's demands with mental well-being? Mm. What? What? <laughs> right. What's mental? When, well-being? when is Mental Health Month? Is that April? It is. Oh, it it might be this I month. I will look into that. Oh, it is. Okay. <laughs> or maybe it's Men's Health. March is Men's Health. Oh, I will look into that as well. Uh, yeah, sure. yeah, we need to look that up. Or tell us in the chat. If you already know, put in the chat. Let us yeah, know. Very, very, very. <laughs> Confirm. Um, well, that being said, what is mental well-being? You know, I've been, I was, I was just telling Winston that for the past 40 hours, I've been having a lot of conversations around um, mental well-being. And mm-hmm. I, I just want to point out that I think a lot of us think that it's like a destination point. It's like, I've arrived and now I am went- mentally well. <laughs> and I just, um, I think every day I become oh, more and more point. aware of the fact that it's not a destination. It is just a journey. It is, we're just constantly working on our well-being, just kind of like we're constantly working on our physical health too, right? Like, um, you don't just like, get to a place and then you're like, I'm here. I'm whatever weight you want to be, whatever size you want to be in your clothes. You like constantly work on it. Mm -hmm. Maybe some call it maintenance, but yeah. So that like you're constantly working on it anyway. So that being said, um, I think right now there are a lot of people who aren't in a place where they know how to deal with their emotions well, I think that's where we are. I think a lot of people just don't know how to deal with their emotions. Aren't really, we're not in a place where we're able to communicate those emotions. Um, I also feel like there's this expectation of us as humans to also be emotionless because it's almost like when you have an emotion, it's like, why are you having emotions? Like, that's like a bad thing, but it's like, but we're human, so we do. Um, so, a lot of different things I think are um, preventing us from maintaining a, a mental well-being that is more you know on the healthy side than than on the non-healthy side and so mm-hmm. i think for that reason it's going to be hard for us to balance modern life's demands um, because we're all kind of wrestling with our own mental well-being i think in order to balance the demands if we're focusing on that word but like i think in order to like deal with i think like roll with the punches kind of a thing in order for us to do that i think we need to also be in environments and be around people who also support all you know our collective mental well-being i think that would be helpful okay um i'm i'm gonna say that i do believe that this is possible and my biggest reason is the amount of resources that I think are available now. And I'm just talking about in the s- scope of my life and what I've understood on this subject. I think there are way more things now at my age than let's say even when I was 20. Uh, I think there are way more conversations being had around this subject, which makes it, which makes the, to your point, the ability for people to even have conversations around emotions a lot more uh, plausible nowadays. And honestly, I, I'm just going to leave it. I think the resources that are available now, the information, I mean, there are people out there having a lot of these, we're having these type of conversations more. And I don't believe that that was how it seemed when I was a lot younger. Uh, so I do think you can, I think the word balance may make this, you know, it, that might throw it off a little bit, but I do think you can ha- have a better overall mental 
well-being because of the awareness around this subject as a whole. You know what I mean? I don't know if anyone can balance anything. I liked your example about fitness. Fitness is a life goal. Like one of the places I used to work, it'd be like fitness is um, fitness is life. And I actually, people used to be like, oh, that's corny, but it, it makes sense because people would come to the gym with goals, not realizing, to your point, you can lose 10 pounds now, but a year from now, we may end up being in this same position, or you may have a new, new, new striving for in this, in that area. And so you're constantly going to be moving forward, moving forward, moving forward. I think mental health is like that. You're going to encounter different things at different stages of your life, and you're going to have to find or utilize the different resources around to help bring yourself into some semblance of balance in that new stage of your life. You know what I mean? Yeah. So you have kids, different thing. You probably have different things you need in that area and, and so on and so on. So, but it's, as a whole, I think you can find a balance uh, when it comes yeah. to this. That makes a ton of sense too. Well, I'm also interested to hear what our experts have to say. Yeah, I love these people. Right. We are back. Yeah, with the school yeah. of life. Yes, we love the school of life. If you guys ever watch us, thank you so much for what you put out there. It's super helpful. Say that. All right, here we go. When trying to understand why we might be feeling unhappy, we tend to be drawn to reasons relatively close to home. It might have to do with friends, relationships, health, jobs, families, or schedules. What we tend not to do, however, is to start talking about our place in history. It would sound overblown or just plain bizarre to begin to pin a sizable share of our difficulties to broad historical forces. Yet whatever role our psyches and our families and colleagues might be playing in our moods, a proper understanding of our situation cannot be complete without consideration of the highly peculiar novel era in which we exist. We are troubled in part because we dwell in highly unbalanced times. At the centre of all pre-modern societies were powers that helped to put humans in their place, older, bigger, stronger, holier phenomena, perhaps a god, a natural energy or a spirit. However important humans might have felt, However grand the aristocracy or urgent the news of the day, people knew that they were not the measure of all things, that above and beyond the earthly realm there was something else, more mysterious, imposing and strange, to which they would all regularly have to bow and which would relativise them in one another's eyes. The fanciest king was nothing next to a thunderous god, the mightiest invention pathetic next to an angry sea. But we humans are now the most astonishing things we can conceive of. It's our momentous doings, our intelligence, our incomprehensibly wondrous technologies that mesmerize us and are at the center of collective consciousness. God has died and nature is to be pitied and patronized like a wounded, once proud animal. We have lost any redeeming sense of our own unimportance. We are, at the same time, each one of us, told repeatedly that we could do and be anything. We might, with sufficient hard work, assume the presidency, unlock a major scientific secret, or become known to the entire planet through our athletic or artistic prowess. We are also, thereby, subtly informed that only a very special destiny is valid. Mm. There is no dignity left in a so-called ordinary life. There can be nothing to celebrate in an unheralded, unknown existence. We cannot live quietly and be in bed by nine. We must become someone, or else look on with envy and rage at those who have evaded the perils of mediocrity. We used to know almost nothing of what happened beyond our own valley or shoreline. Life went by so slowly that we were often, without appreciating how much this kept us sane, a bit bored. Now, no bloodshed, scandal, upset or peril can occur anywhere on the planet without us hearing of it in minutes, and we are, as a result, in a state of continuous unrest and alarm, unable to set anything negative in context, unsure of how to evaluate our species, 
terrified to trust or speak to a stranger, constantly feeling that we are leading the wrong lives. We know everything except the less perceptible things that really matter. Our attention is drawn only to our discords, our spitefulness and our cruelty. We've been stripped of opportunities to contemplate older, slower currents, to draw inspiration from dawn, the murmurings of doves or robins or the barks of ancient trees that speak of time measured in centuries. We've been sold the idea that the one solution to our loneliness lies in romantic love. We therefore search with frantic abandon in the lonely concrete canyons of our modern megalopolises for one very special being who can be everything to us. Best friend, sexual partner, playmate, kindergarten teacher, cook, chauffeur. And then, when inevitably we cannot find them, we perceive ourselves as having been uniquely cursed. We misunderstand the generality of the problem and miss the solace available in the less febrile and less prestigious realm of friendship. In distributing our needs more equitably among a whole community, none of whose members need to answer to the whole of anyone's longings. We have been rendered exceptionally lonely by the unwittingly cruel notion of a soulmate. We could, back then, stand away from our work and see something substantial and solid that we had made, a chair, some horseshoes, a house. We now occupy ourselves on tasks that have been infinitely subdivided and thereby lost much of their wider logic. We carry professional titles like logistics controller, automation specialist or human resource manager that show us up as minute cogs in endlessly complicated engines. We may be richer than ever. We struggle to see what difference we could possibly make to anyone else's life. All the while, we lose ourselves in temptations which our evolutionary past leaves us defenseless against. Because we were programmed to eat any sugary thing, a rare blackberry or apricot that came our way, we now cannot resist the plethora of satanic confections on offer on every street corner. Because in our old villages, we might have seen one or two fertile people a day, we now can't stop looking at ceaseless digital processions of the unclothed. We have no willpower to resist the pitiless delights of the modern world. It's hard to reverse any of the pressures we've been placed under, but even if we cannot, knowing that these exist helps us to locate with greater fairness the origins of many of our troubles. We are not uniquely or personally awful, frantic, greedy or degenerate. We are under historically exceptional pressures. To know ourselves properly is to honour how much of our madness does not belong simply to us. Once again, School of Life, once again, <laughs> putting things in perspective. I would just like to also point out the satanic confections that are on every corner. <laughs> I thought that was, yeah, was a, a really funny way it was to actually say one that. Of the, actually one of the ones where I disagree with some of the stuff they had to say. Oh, really? Oh, that's so interesting. Um, yeah. uh, okay, well, then you start then. What, did, <laughs> what are some of the things so, that are for you? No, no, no. I, I mean, obviously, a lot of what they're sharing is clearly factual. I'm sure there's statistics that can show, you know, or, uh, prove much of what they're discussing. Uh, I, I will say the parts I did agree with is the idea that there was a time where I know people did take pride in the jobs they had. You took pride or there was some sales sense sell some sense of self-worth when it came to saying something like I've worked at a place for 30 years or some of these things that socially I think there were uh, there was a sense of praise around the, these things and to hit to their point now it's the exceptional is where many of us are are shooting for they mentioned like an athlete an athlete is someone that can be known worldwide in this era where that necessarily wasn't be that wasn't always the case before you may have been a very famous athlete in america but now that's something that's gone worldwide and that's the agenda for many of these things even if you're a musician the goal is to become a worldwide phenomenon and other things like that so i think the scope of our goals have shifted so therefore something is again maybe uh not as uh not as um 
you know, outrageous or well done is working at a place for 20 years now becomes such a small thing. Uh, things like even when they talk about relationships, I do believe that as well. I think there's this idea now where being alone is like becoming like a social pariah. And, and yet I find that even in that space, I don't see much positivity about finding relationships. Even, even, and I've had this conversation recently. When, me, when most people talk about marriage, I really hear it from a positive perspective. Marriage doesn't seem like something many people are enjoying, and yet so many people are seeking it. And that seems so weird to me, that many people are looking for this thing that they don't, when you talk to many people that are, doesn't seem like a place that you'd want or you don't seem like the level you'd want to get to in that relationship. So it seems weird that you're something that you, you know, you're probably going to end up being unhappy in years later. And yet you're telling yourself that the lack of it now is why you're sad or unhappy. Um, so that seemed, I, that's, well, I'll you know, just counter yeah. and say that I've had, I've actually, I'm around a lot of people who are married and happy and talk about it happily. So maybe it's just different. No, that's, that's fair, Circle. but the, I would say if you were to look at it as a whole, and I'm sure there are people who have those type of circles or community around them, but for the whole, and I would say if you look at it from the and the perspective they talked about of being what's being marketed or shared, I don't think that that's everyone's. I would say the majority of people may not be having that experience or may not find themselves. And I obviously for myself, I don't necessarily find that to be the case. I've actually purposely started looking for things like that. And just when it, to be honest, I don't see as much on the positive side as if I was to choose to look for a negative, but that could be the case for anything, right? Or many things. Uh, but the part where they were saying that our belief that we can do and be anything now, I can't, I don't necessarily think that that attitude is a negative one compared to the idea of not thinking you're worth more much because you don't go out and achieve what I, you know, I don't know what everyone's goal is or is it just my video? Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. You were chopping up, uh, but now it's better. Okay, it's about that. Um, yeah, I just don't think, I think it's a better, it's better to be optimistic and believe you can do something than the alternative. And I'll just leave that, leave it there. Mm. That was the biggest well, part I disagreed with them with. Uh, right, right, right. I, I, well, I don't, I don't necessarily think that they were saying that it's a bad thing. It just puts pressure on you because it seems like people are trying to be extraordinary. There is a lot of so it's so funny in my shame research. One of the things that came up is that a lot of people have a lot of shame because they're they're it, it's called shame and mediocrity. There's this idea within our society that like if you just order if you're just doing a, living an ordinary life if you aren't impacting thousands of people millions of people or whatever I guess whatever your definition of is of not norm uh, not ordinary or, or extraordinary um, but if you're just living m mediocre a mediocre life that um, there's shame in that. And there have been several studies to show that I, that might be a Western notion, meaning like America, maybe a lot of um, Western European yeah. countries, but um, there are studies to show that that is, that is something that's real right now <laughs> in, in this particular culture. Um, but, and I think what they were just saying is that, and if that's the case, that only increases one's likelihood to well i mean if you're feeling shame about it that means you're obviously not feeling good about it um and it could lead to why people are feeling anxious and and all the other things i think the other thing that was interesting was the and i've been oh our favorite guy stephen bartlett die of a ceo we've we've shown his stuff before he recently interviewed uh, i'm gonna forget this guy's name right now but um uh, he's he used to be a matchmaker. Then he worked for um, Hinge and several other companies. But he's considered a relationship expert. And one of the things that he was identifying also is that modern dating has changed, and now we look for a mate who can fill a lot of different needs, just like they described: playmate, lover, best friend, therapist, uh, travel buddy, like all all the different things, and years ago that wasn't the case 
so so like essentially before birth control pills, but like let's say like the 50s and 60s, you got married maybe for love, but you didn't expect your spouse to be all the things. You had like other friend groups that would be the the, the friend group that you traveled with, the friend group that like I don't know, you like to read books with the friend, you know, who pushed you mentally, the friend group who did what, so you didn't look for your spouse to fill all the things because you had other groups that fulfilled those other things that you um, wanted. So it's just a change over time in what we as humans have looked for in a mate that um, I think just increases the likelihood of, of any one of us feeling like, Perfect. oh man. I don't, yeah, I haven't, I haven't reached, I don't have the thing, right? It just increases, I think, levels of anxiety. Yeah, for sure. Your expectations on what you're supposed to be in makes it so that, again, many people who are probably in okay relationships leave those relationships because what they're maybe seeing market to them on social media is not what they have. And therefore, and I, we, we've done even on our Wednesday, if you remember the young lady I mentioned, not, and again, her statement could be taken out of context but but not be the bus driver oh yeah <laughs> and then when she elaborated just expanding on the fact that she just wants to be with someone who's a little bit more ambitious than just be a bus driver but her statement to me is indicative of something similar to what you just said we want more from the people that we're with all right so we're, we're expecting more we demand more we demand more from our from our businesses we demand more from our athletes i feel like there's a significant there's significantly more of a demand from us on all in all areas of our life that we want excellence and there's just this new standard that i think you were saying is unrealistic in one sense and therefore you're you're never going to find that one thing there's a woman i listened to um and what she talks about is there's so many people who are searching for love in life but you're searching for love in all the wrong places because you you have love in your life but because you're demanding a certain type you refuse to let any or other types of love into your life and if you would allow that other type of love you'll get the thing you really want or you'll get the thing that you believe that you really want you know what i mean like in her example and i i think of you whenever she said this she's like there's talking to a person who's like oh you know i'm looking for romantic love and she's like but but that pet you have, you can be giving love there. And you don't realize that by giving love there, you you shift who you are and you'll someone will come into your life. Like it could be me thinking of you like petting Bella in the park and being in a good place about that. And that guy, you know, comes by. But if you're sitting there, going, oh, my God, no one wants like that kind of mindset. You know, Bella's not being given love. You're not really giving off that vibe. That person, that same person could walk right by seeing, damn, she's in a terrible mood and just keep it pushing. So it's just about recognizing, again, we can, we probably are more, we're probably in a better place in life than we think, but we don't have our opportunity to tell ourselves that because of so much that's being shown to you that makes you think otherwise. This world, the way the world is, especially, and I'll pick on the news a little bit, it depicts it. This world is violent and you never want to leave. And I hear my parents tell me things that for them, because of what they're watching, is their reality than my reality, where I just don't, I choose not to let myself see those things. So I honestly am not having the same experiences to them. They're fearful. They're, they, they believe just certain things that I know I don't allow myself to see. And therefore, I just don't believe that, those things, or I choose not to believe those things. No, nope, that's all very real. And I do love my Bella. <laughs> <laughs> As you should. As you should. No, but this was a really good, um, you know, I, I again, I know the video made some great points right, that I definitely can't, you know, say otherwise. But I know at the end of the day, um, each of us are going to have to find what works for us. You know, in, yeah. in everything. Yeah. In everything. In everything. Yeah. Yeah, your your relationship is not going to look like mine, and it shouldn't. And I think you, if you can hold on to that and realize that there's a there's going to be a uniqueness in everything you do. Uh, and I know we talked to a lot of entrepreneurs here, and we encourage you guys to recognize that what you can bring to the marketplace uh, is going to be unique and different than anyone else. And I really think that that holds true for other areas of our life as well. A hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. So agreed. This is a good one.
This was a good one. Guys, please go ahead and put in the chat like all of your thoughts, all of your comments on this. Um, we love to hear it. Keep bringing your questions and don't forget to subscribe, okay. hit the notification bell and the like. But until then, as always, remember that you deserve the good life. Say that. Say that. We'll see you guys. Have a great week.